Welcome to Everyone Loves Guitar, where we sit down and talk with interesting professional guitar players, uncover their stories, and discover what makes them tick. If you love guitar, music, and the backstory of people's lives, stick around. You're in the right place. Hi, this is Craig. Just want to let you know you can now advertise here on Everyone Loves Guitar podcast. For more information, go to everyonelovesguitar.com forward slash advertise. That's everyonelovesguitar.com forward slash advertise. Hey, everybody. This is Craig Garber from Everyone Loves Guitar, and I am here today. It's an honor and a privilege to be with Tommy Halapa. And Tommy is one of those guys that's like one of my favorite guitar players when I first started this show. I didn't know Tommy's name, but I was hoping to get the guitar player from uh, Greenleaf in there and from Dozer. And it turns out it's the same guy in both bands. And uh, he's a tremendous musician, a really good writer. And he's got, he's put out a tremendous catalog over the last, you know, what, 20 years, 25 years. Yeah. It's about Dozer started 23 years ago, actually. So yeah, Yeah, that's great. You've put out a a huge catalog, man, a massive amount of work. Props to you. Uh, Tommy was uh, from born in Sweden, 1975. His parents are actually from Finland, and uh, they met in Sweden in the early 70s. His musical interest started early, and uh, like like most of us, he destroyed his parents' vinyls in the late 70s. But uh, he says it wasn't a big deal. It's mostly bad Finnish music, but I don't believe that. Uh, around eight or nine years old, he started going through his uncle's vinyl collection. And he started really getting into rock, and he remembers listening to ZZ Top, Led Zeppelin, and it was Kiss Vinyls that caught him. Man, it's really interesting. I'm like 10 years older than you, and then there's guys. So the guys 10 years older than me, it was the Beatles. My age, it was kind of like a range, but 10 years younger, it was all Kiss. I talked to so many guys that Kiss just, you know, same thing. You did it for him. Um, and the rest, as they say, is history. He started playing guitar at age 14. He started his first real band called Dozer when he was 20, and he started Greenleaf when he was 24. He's re- released 12 full-length albums with both bands, five with Dozer and seven with Greenleaf, and a ton of EPs. He's played shows all over Europe, Australia, and the USA. And uh, besides music, he likes fishing, spending time with his girlfriend and his three-month-old daughter, and congratulations on that, man. I'm really happy for you. Thanks. Um, so first of all, let me just tell everybody uh, what uh, about Dozer and Greenleaf. They are both killer bands. If you like sort of 70s rock, I mean, they're kind of like lumped in the stoner genre, which I can't stand, but they're great rock and roll band, a great psychedelic blues-based rock band. And they, man, they have both bands, Dozer and Greenleaf, are just tremendous catalogs. I mean, I have every album that both bands put out, and they are all amazing. Just like if you if you want to get pumped up and you want to feel good about your life and you're, you're ready to kick some ass and like go to the gym or anything, man, it's relaxing. It, just really good music, really well-written melodies, and man, it rocks. So um, uh, you've, you've put out I want to talk about your catalog. You put out 12 albums and a bunch of EPs in the last 20 years. You're the primary songwriter on all this as well, aren't you? <laughs> Actually, I mean, both bands, Greenleaf and Dozer, we, we, okay, I come up with most of the riffs and the song ideas, but we put the songs together. Um, yeah, the whole band. We just jam the riffs that I come up with, and then after a while it turns into a song, you know? Yeah, well, whatever you're doing, so it, it's, it's not. It, I, I tried to write whole songs before in the early dose of days, but it never, it never turns out the way I hear it in my head. <laughs> so it was no use doing that. So it's it's better if I come up with a riff and maybe an idea for a verse or a chorus or something, and then we yeah, turn it into a song together. So. But what's really cool is that none of the stuff. I mean, it sounds like Dozer and it sounds like Greenleaf, but there's nothing that's like. You know, when you put out that much music and nothing sounds the same, you know, you're not repeating ideas. You know, a lot of bands will basically have a song that's maybe a slowed down version of another song or they have the same, you know, chord progression, but they're starting on a different chord or something like that. Your stuff is really all different and great melodies, man. And and I think that's really hard to do. Um. Okay, so Dozer's last album, 
was beyond colossal in 2008. I thought that was a freaking amazing record. The last two songs, uh, two, two, the songs Two Coins for Eyes and Bound for Greatness, they're not only my favorite Dozer tunes, but they're two of my all-time favorite songs in general. And then that's it. Dozer, stop. What the hell happened? Um, let's say that life happened. <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> uh, Frederick, Frederick, our singer, he wanted to... Yeah, he wanted to go back to school to get a real yeah because he yeah he went to school before that but he always stopped the yeah the education so he wanted a yeah he wanted a degree in yeah I, actually I don't remember what he went to study or but yeah he wanted to go to school and um, and then he got kids. After uh, that, also, yeah. and so now he has, I think, three kids. Wow. So yeah, but yeah, we stopped playing. But it took like three, four years, and we did, we did a few shows in was it 2013 or 14? In, Swe- in Sweden? No, that was we did that. You heard about the Desert Fest in London and Berlin? And yeah, we did that, and yeah. So now we we haven't stopped playing. But we're not playing much, you know. Yeah. This year we haven't played at all. Last year, now we didn't play anything last year. But there's a couple of shows coming up next year. But it's it's here in Europe. It's very cool. Where are you? Where is? Are you most popular in Sweden? No, not really. Really? It's, it's yeah. Where are you most popular? But like, I, I would say maybe Germany. Those countries around there: Germany, Switzerland, Austria, and that's, that's really yeah, interesting. It's, 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 it's the same with Greenleaf also. It's hard to get good shows here in Sweden, I think. Why is that? It, it's it's starting it started to get better actually, but I don't know. It's hard, you know, they you're lucky if you get the yeah, gas money and a sandwich if you play shows here in Sweden. That's terrible. But it, it's like I said, it started to get a little bit better. Good. But the rest of the Europe works out fine, so Which is crazy. Which is crazy yeah. because there's so much good music coming out of Sweden. Yeah, maybe that's the problem. There's too many bands. I don't yeah. know. Uh, that's weird. Yeah. So, and uh, two years later, you started Greenleaf. And I was wondering, when you originally founded the band, was there anything that you wanted to do differently than you did with Dozer, uh, either musically or anything else? And were any of the members, the original members, the same besides you? The Actually, it was me and Daniel, uh, the guy who, um, I don't know if, have you heard about Demon Cleaner? The no, band? no. Nah, he was the drummer in Demon Cleaner. And nowadays, he's the guy who records our albums and produces our albums. Cool, man. <laughs> yeah, me and him talked about that we wanted to do something different. Not, yeah, the typical stoner rock. We wanted to do a total 70s rock thing. More, yeah, classic rock album. That's how we started Greenleaf. Of course, we were out, yeah, having a beer somewhere and talking about well, we should start a band together, and you know how it is. But this actually turned into a band. Oh yeah, so, yeah. On the first albums, it was that yeah, was Frederick from Dozer was in it also. Oh, oh he it was even though he left. Yeah. What happened? No, no, with- no, no. Greenleaf, Greenleaf. The first Greenleaf album came out in. 2000 or 2001. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So this was uh, before. Yeah, way, way before yeah. Dozer stopped playing. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I also I have a note here. I, I always thought, honestly, man, Frederick has one of the best voices I've ever heard. I mean, he's, he's a beautiful singer, man. Very powerful. But the current lead singer from Greenleaf, was that Arvid? He's just as good of a voice, which is you know, I was. Do you look for a particular kind of voice, or how do you attract these, you know, great singers? Yeah, I would say that a singer that makes me smile. That's <laughs> yeah. Then I'm happy, you know. <laughs> and both, yeah, Frederick and I, we started playing together. It was yeah, maybe two, three years before Dozer started. Just yeah, for fun and just yeah, jamming and. And Frederick wasn't a singer back then. We took turns singing and playing guitar. And, really? And, Fre- and Frederick was, yeah, could hear right away that he was a, be- 
a much better singer than I was. He's a great so singer. Like a, I mean, he's yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a Frederick, voice. Yeah. I have to agree. He's just, uh, especially, uh, yeah, from, he was good from the start, but at the end, he was just, just amazing, I think. Through the eyes of Heathens oh. and Leon Colossal, the melodies and everything he came up with is just great. Really powerful, really strong, and really carries a great tune. I mean, he's, you know, yeah. right on pitch and just a strong, great, you know, like a leader, like a, you know, like, like a singer ideally should be. He's got it, man. Yeah. He's definitely yeah, got and it. I, and I mentioned melodies, and I think that's might be a big thing for me also, that it does, I don't want to be in a band with just a guy screaming. That's, yeah. Vocals should have some kind of, yeah, good melodies in there also, so... I agree with you, man. You named the band Greenleaf. Is weed like really big in Sweden? Not really. Not compared to the rest of Europe, no. So like what? It's, uh, you know, the name that started out as a joke. Oh, the whole okay. stoner rock thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we see. Were like, me, me and Donya were like, yeah, let's call the band Greenleaf. And we were like, yeah. But then we, couldn't <laughs> co- we couldn't come up with anything better. So it, yeah, we it stuck, stuck with it. So it's, yeah. Very cool, man. Because I, I I don't smoke weed, so it's <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, because I would have figured just here, you know, you see the band Greenleaf, you figure oh, everybody's getting high in the band. I mean, not, uh, not there's what, anything wrong what, with it. That's what everybody thinks. So, but nowadays, yeah, people, most of the fans know it that we don't do it. In, in the earlier days, they were yeah coming with weed all the time. But no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You, you've had I a, met fans. Like, I don't know if have you heard about Weed Eater, the band. Yeah, man, I think I have. I think I have one of uh, or some of their music actually. Weed yeah, Eater. We did a we did a few shows with them, and they were like, yeah, they started to laugh when we don't smoke weed. And your name is Greenleaf. Why don't you smoke weed? No, I <laughs> I, I, I totally <laughs> get it because as, as a joke for the whole Stone Rock thing, it makes yeah. perfect sense, man. Um. You've had a lot of members in and out of Greenleaf over the last 18 years. What's the biggest challenge about like finding one unit that could stick? <clears throat> I, the reason why we have had so many different members, first of all, is that, you know, it was just a project for me in the beginning. The first, I don't know, three, four albums. We did, we, yeah, I think we did... In 10 years, we did only maybe like seven, eight live shows. It was oh. just a thing. Yeah, it was just um, when Dozer wasn't touring or doing anything, the other guys, yeah, maybe after a tour, the other guys wanted a month off to just relax and be home. And But I, yeah, I can't take a month off from music. So I had to I have to That's very yeah, cool. make another Greenleaf album. So I just ask people, friends and whatever to be, yeah, come to the studio and yeah, record something. So that's why there's like, on some albums, there's like three different singers and yeah. Interesting. That's really cool, yeah. man. Were you always interested in writing? I mean, because your output over the last 20 years is, is really massive. Yeah, when I started playing guitar, it actually came, it was maybe, let's see I have to take away the comes up a stupid sign on the computer. No, man, do so you I can think? See, ah, no, now I can see you there. Yeah, um, what was the question again? <laughs> it, it, were you always interested in writing because you've had such a massive output over the last 20 something years, 23 years? I think, yeah, it started when I started playing guitar. After a while, I, I, I think I've. I'm just yeah figured out that it was easier for me to make up my own stuff than learning other other people's music. So maybe that's how it all started. And yeah, it still is like that. Yeah. Actually, yeah, of course we can play some cover songs, but it's easier to make your own riffs because it's yeah, you don't have to sit there and listen to it and try to figure out whatever someone else is playing. Yeah. I'm too I'm too lazy for that, maybe. <laughs> Well, I don't know if laziness. I mean, you got to be pretty ambitious to write that much, but um, I it does make sense what you're saying. You know, really, when it comes down to it, if you in is, the early in the earlier days, it was really easy because um, you just take up the guitar and say, oh, this is especially with the first few Dozer albums. It was like, ah, yeah, oh, this sounds cool. Yeah, that's a song. <laughs> you know? But but they were great. You made some really good yeah, music. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
totally proud of all the doses, early doses stuff. Also, it, nowadays it's a little bit harder. You put more because every time you, every album you do, you try to make it better and yeah, try to make it interesting. Yeah, f- first of all, for yourself. Sure. That's why it keeps evolving the whole time, and so it gets harder and harder. But yeah, it's. Yeah, I still haven't gotten to the point when it's too hard to come up with something that feels good. Great, it man. takes a little bit longer now, but it's yeah. There might be a month when I it feels like I can't come up with anything good, but then it's just yeah. A few days later, it's like bam, there you have a riff. Oh, this is a cool riff. <laughs> bring, bring it to the rehearsal room, and yeah, hopefully it works there also, and that, other guys feel the same. So that's great, man. Well, I hope you don't uh, ever stop. So, I never, so. Well, I'll, I'll keep listening as long as you keep producing. <laughs> cool. Hey, uh, so two days from today, the new record is coming out. It's a, uh, I've had the opportunity to listen to it. It's an incredible album, 10 tracks. And honest, this is no bullshit. And I, 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 I gave every single track five stars on my iTunes. I mean, I thought the album was just, just really amazing. Really. In fact, I was surprised exactly for the reason you just said. I'm like, man, how? Because if I go back and look at Rise Above the Meadow, which was the last album in 2016, every one of those tracks had five stars. So I was thinking, you know, oh, there's got to be a couple of duds on here. And man, there wasn't. And again, I'm not just saying it because we're on the on this call together. I, I really loved it. Um, the album's called Hear the Rivers, and I would encourage everybody listening to check it out in two days when it comes out. Um, questions for you about the album. Where did you record this, and did you record everybody together, or do you guys do tracks separately? We recorded it in Stockholm in a studio called Grandal. And um, we, yeah, we recorded everything live, except for the vocals. That's right. the, Yeah, that's the way we want to do it. So we get the yeah get the live feeling. So so you're old school about that, which you know when, yeah. maybe that's why everything's five stars, man. I think that has to make a difference, yeah. you know. Yeah, you can you, you can hear that it's live if you really listen to it. You can hear the tempo going up and down the whole time. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter as long as it feels good. It's it's good. You know, but what you said, I don't I don't know why. I think maybe because perfection quote perfection is supposedly achievable now people shy away from that but i don't think people are looking for perfect i think people are, i'm looking for like i'm never listening to a record and say wow they're speeding up or wow yeah. that got out of tune because everybody's human so if something's out of tune for a couple of notes it's like okay you that's reasonable to expect on a full album that you're going to have a couple of notes out of tune but what I'm listening for is what you just said. If it feels good, then it's good music, man. Yeah. And, and and I wish more people would have that. I think this aim for perfection is kind of um, ridiculous, to be honest with you, because, I mean, who the hell's perfect and what is perfect? Nothing. No. Um, in today's day and age, the motivation to make records isn't as high as it was years ago, simply because, you know, financially you got to lay out a lot of money and people aren't buying records and you're not making money on the record. It's almost like lead generation for touring. What motivated you to put out another record and not just another record, another record with 10 tracks, 10 really good tracks. I mean, you could have put out an EP with six. That's what a lot of people do now, putting an EP out with six tracks. What was your motivation for doing something like a masterpiece like this? That's, yeah, I don't know what to say. It's, that's the way we want to do it. We don't want to be sheep bastards and just release maybe a single. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's not that. in yeah. the end. It's we get a bunch of not much money, but we get a little bit of money from a record label. And yeah, give us an album cover and an album, and here's the money. And yeah, we just spend pretty much everything on the on, on the studio right. and. And the album cover, so <laughs> that's awesome, man. Your covers are great. Who did the same person do this cover and then Rise Above the Meadow? Because they're yeah, it's the same guy. It's yeah, Sebastian Jer- Jerke. It's a German guy. He did a good yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. latest latest cover is I I love it. It's very cool, man. And but with the trees, even the last one, I liked it with the you know the the, the all the trees in there and and the animals. I thought it was really cool. 
Yeah. Yeah, he has some crazy ideas. For the last album for Rise Above the Meadow, we said he asked us if we had any ideas, and we were like, Yeah, maybe a bear would be cool. And he came up with that trippy yeah. stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, he has a good imagination. So yeah. Great. Yeah, great. we love love working with him. That's awesome, man. I want to talk about you a quick question. You tuned down a half step on some songs, right? Actually we tuned down to C. Oh, Green. yeah. The last three albums are in C. So, what are your strings? It's like two steps. Yeah. So, I use twelve to sixteen. And and what are the notes from low E or low C? I guess. Yeah, C, and then yeah, you have to figure it out. <laughs> I can't that. Okay, so I used the tuner the whole time, so I, but I can't remember. Okay, it so it's probably yeah. C G uh, C. And then it's probably G, um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. It depends what you're doing. That's wild. So you tune down to C. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Very interesting, man. We'll talk about before, your gear. Hmm? Before that, on the earlier albums, we were in D. But now when Arvid joined the band, we tur- tuned down to C. Yeah, it helps. Because it felt, yeah, it felt, more, yeah, it felt better for him to sing. Yeah. It helps. A lot of guys I know that are been singing a while, they have to tune down because you just can't hit those high pitches yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. And For not, example, Kiss. So, well, a lot of people, you know, you can't yeah. hit those high pitch notes without killing yeah, yeah, yeah. yourself. Um, I want to talk about two of the tracks on the new album, uh, Hear the Rivers. And honestly, it was hard to pick which two because, like I said, I have all of them rated five stars. But the, the first one I want to talk about is Oh My Bones. It, it rocks really hard. And then there's a cool slow break, and then you basically solo through much of the outro right through the end. Is there any backstory to that song? Not really. It's just a riff that I came up with, and we felt like doing a more yeah, classic rock song, you know, a riff rock song. And that's pretty much it. You know, it's I had the riff, we rehearsed, yeah, we played it at rehearsal, and we it was i think it was written pretty fast yeah and then yeah usually out of it our singer is not with us when we rehearse i record everything with my iphone <laughs> <laughs> and then he writes and the then, lyrics to it yeah uh, yeah we send them send a song to him if we come up with something at rehearsal i send it to out of it and he writes the vocal melodies and the lyrics and everything so and then he comes in and cuts the vocals yeah, yeah. Before the before we go into the studio for real, he comes. Yeah, of course he comes to rehearsals also, and mm. and we yeah rearrange some songs and yeah. Very cool. But man. when the idea when we come up with the idea, we just yeah it's usually just two or three people recording it on the iPhone, and then we send it to the other guys. That's great. Yeah, man. Our, our bass player lives in Germany also, so it's. Oh. It's hard to get together all the time. So. Oh wow, that is how 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 long of a flight is that from Sweden to Germany? It's to he lives in Berlin, so it's like one and a half hour only. So. Oh, that's not, not bad. So yeah. No. You know we're we're over here in America. We have no clue, and I, I got to be honest with you. Like w- you know we we are clueless. The only reason I know a little more is because my wife is from the UK. So like I'm at least aware that Europe exists and that there's a bunch of di- <laughs> different countries there, but I got to yeah. be, <laughs> you know, and also cause I grew up in New York city and everybody was from somewhere else, but you yeah. know, thank God for that because I would have no clue of anything South of New Jersey. Um, the last song that closes the album out river, the river's lullaby, beautiful song, man. It's, it's eight and a half, it's eight, eight, little over eight minutes. And, um, is there any significance of rivers or lullaby? How do you mean? Like, like is is there a, a special meaning for the the rivers or water or lullaby at all? I I think Arvid told me that I haven't actually read the lyrics in a while, but he, there's a it, it's it's a story about a guy who drowns girls. It's oh, a it's a murder. It's a it's wow. A, yeah, that's really interesting. So you man. know they go to sleep. You know lullaby. Oh they, shit! That means that he drowns the women that he kills. It's a mass murder. It's a song about a mass murder. I think. 
That's wild, man. That's yeah. interesting. Now I got to go back and listen to the lyrics really. And really. then, yeah, the reverse and all that. It fits to the, where we come from in Sweden. It's part called Dalen. And, you know, it's it's only lakes and rivers here. So it fits us as a band perfectly also. But there's, yeah, there's more to it. That's really cool, man. Um, You changed tempo a couple of times midway through that. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. Is there any... uh? And then at the end, again, beautiful melody and a real strong close. Is what what made you? You guys don't do that a lot. That was really cool. I think we try to do it every once in a while, but you know, it's at least on every album we try to have one longer song. Yeah, you and know? you guys do always. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's changing the tempos and it's it's not know, easy to do we, that we, either. No, no, no. It's it's not easy to write a song like that and yeah. make it. You know, make the eight minutes interesting, you know, not just play the same riff or the same tempo the whole time. And yeah, but for me, it comes from, yeah, Black Sabbath, you know, yes, yeah. yeah. especially on, yeah, like Paranoid album, there's stuff going on. It could be like three songs, but they push it, put it together. It's, it's one song, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, what is it? Yeah. Sleep, N-I-B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. Um, can I ask you a couple of about a couple of my all time favorite Greenleaf songs? Yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, two thousand three, Secret Alphabets, the song, the combination. My God, what I love that song. Um, do you remember what amp and what guitar you were playing on that track? I think there is. Let me think. There is two amps that probably are on that song. It, one is actually a PV5150. Okay. And the other one is a Fender Bassman, a bass amp. Yep. Yeah. That's uh, that's those two that we used on that album. Um, your tone was just like fuzzed up perfectly there, man. How do you get, what do you use for your fuzz? In that song, if you could remember, I know it's, oh, it's that, that song. A, it's fifteen it's, years ago. And I, yeah, but still, I haven't used so many different pedals. Let's see. Let me think. <laughs> yeah, it could. It. I, I'm not sure if I have an old big muff. Maybe that's in there somewhere. And the, but then it's in those days. I used only the MXR distortion. Oh, that's interesting. It. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I have a big muff. Yeah, but a, I think a, the a sound on that song might be mostly coming from the Fender Basement amp, a 50 watt Fender Basement amp. That's really the, cool. Yeah. I thought that uh, for me, everything about that song was perfect. Your solo, the drums, the vocals are freaking excellent. And I really like, you know, you have some slow breaks in the middle with your like yeah. really good fuzzy licks over them. Was there anything when this was written, like the song is called The Combination, was this like a combination to what? What was the... You know, there's there's no thought about uh, behind the, the title. <laughs> it's just a, the combination. Yeah, that sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, that, that's man. That's how it was on, in, in the early Dozer days, in the early Greenleaf days. Sometimes the song title has nothing to do with the lyrics. And but, especially on the first two maybe Greenleaf albums, the lyrics are just total nonsense on, on some of the songs. That's great, man. Fre Frederick, Frederick came into the studio and he's like, yeah, I have a mo vocal melody. I don't have any lyrics to it. And it was like, oh, shit. So we took up magazines that were around us in the studio. It was like old guitar player or guitar world. And we just look through them and look and look for words. And That's great, man. Yeah, so it's all just thrown together. Not not all the songs, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's of say, course, let's say half of the songs. That's great. Are man. just thrown together in the studio. The, the the lyrics are thrown together in the studio, and yeah, that's awesome. Let me tell everybody again the name of this song. Please check it out. It's called "The Combination," and the album is Greenleaf's 2003 Secret Alphabets. Do you know there's an old Aerosmith song called "Combination," yeah. That, yeah. and it's a great Actually, fucking song. I think it's from Rocks. Yeah, exactly. I looked at that vinyl today, so that was yeah, did you really? That's wild. Yeah, that's a great I was at song. The flea man. I was at the flea market today, and I saw that vinyl. I was, I wanted to buy it, but it was yeah, it was too scratched up, so I didn't buy it. Yeah, so I, I don't have, own that vinyl. Yeah, I have that on vinyl from you know I have 
a bunch of records from when I was a kid. <clears throat> and then uh, another one of my favorite uh, Greenleaf songs is Sleep Paralysis from the 2007 album Agents of Aramin. So I'm afraid to ask you, what the hell is Agents of Aramin mean? Or is that something that you guys pulled out of your ass or... Uh, kind of it it sounds cool it so. does sound it sounds <laughs> like like Ar- Ar- really Ar- cool is, i think it's like persian for satan oh or the devil or yeah so you're you're like con you're like a marketing guy man <laughs> yeah, <laughs> between cool. yeah yeah between greenleaf um that's really cool man um did you write that funky bass line in the opening uh no that's actually bank the original bass player in Greenleaf. That's a great opening bass line, man. Yeah. Real powerful yeah. song. It, you got some interesting breaks in it. And um, you also, you had like, there's maybe like a movie clip in there or something? Yeah, there is. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember where we found that. There's like some talking and yeah. things going. And some thunder and lightning and whatever it is. And rain. It's, but it, I don't remember where we got that from. Do you happen to remember what guitar and what amp you're playing in there? Uh, let's see. The guitar is a Firebird, and the amp might, yeah, it's probably still the the PV fifty one fifty and the Fender Bassman. Cool. Um, yeah, I love that song. And again, uh, if you guys listen and check it out, it's called Sleep Paralysis. The album is 2007's Agents of Armin, A-H-R-I-M-A-N. What's the biggest selling Dozer and Greenleaf records, if you happen to know? Oof, I don't really know. With Dozer, I don't know. Maybe. I, I don't have a clue, actually. Interesting. I know that the first few albums, the first two albums, they were on Man's Ruin records, hmm. and everything that was on Man's Ruin sold pretty good because of the label. So yeah, and, but and, yeah, I, I, with the numbers on the rest of it, yeah, we released the rest on Smallstone records, and I, I'm not really sure how much we sold. Are you with Smallstone now still? With with Greenleaf. With Greenleaf, no. The last the re- Rise Above the Meadow we released on Napalm. So, okay, and, and we're still on Napalm. Still on Napalm. Where are they out of? Uh, Austria. Okay, what what's the most popular Greenleaf album? Do you know? I think it might. So far, it's Rise Above the Meadow. It is. Been, yeah, I think it's been selling pretty good. So that's great, man. I tell you, I love Nest of Vipers too. That was a great album in 2012. Yeah. I really dug that. That's yeah. so funny, Agents of Arm, and that's great, man. <laughs> so, um, this question, I mean this only supportive as a fan. You guys. Like I've loved your music for like over ten years. Why the hell aren't you guys touring all over the world? I really think you have something very special as a band to say. I think your music is really well done, and you have a huge catalog. What you know? How the hell can we get Greenleaf to tour all over the place? It it costs a lot of money, and the offers that we get, yeah, we would lose a, a lot of money if we would do it. Yeah. that's yeah it's it sucks man that's the problem i know and it's a it's a problem for a lot of people especially i mean i've talked to five or six bands in sweden and in the netherlands do you know um uh astrosonic do you know those guys yeah and yeah yeah. they From do a Holland. lot yeah right they do a lot of movie clips in their song and i interviewed um, ron van herpen their guitar player and he said the same thing and i mean they're another great band big catalog and i mean it's just you know, I would love to see you guys over here, man. I, I would, it would be wonderful because you're, I think, you know, you, you're extremely talented. So anybody listening to this who can get Greenleaf over here, man, just get a hold of them or get a hold of me and I'll connect you. And uh, we got a, they're a great band. So you grew up in, how, I'm going to hope I don't screw the name of your your town up. Borlange? Borlange. <laughs> Borlange. Is that a big, uh, oh almost? I, I won't say that again because I'm going to disrespect <laughs> the whole city there. Uh, is that a big city or like a smaller town or maybe something? It's in the middle? A, for for a Swedish city. It's like a mid size. It's sixty thousand people live here. So, so that's yeah. that's mid, middle size for a city. Yeah, yeah. You've been there your whole life, pretty much. Yeah, but okay. Now I live outside. I like live half an hour outside of the city now. In the in the forest, on the countryside. 
in, in that's well you go you do a lot of fishing man i've seen some of your photos yeah. on social media you yeah. go, i was actually fishing this morning also so. what's the temperature there it's got to be freezing no uh, it's I don't, I don't know in Fahrenheit, but it's was it's like seven eight Celsius. So I think that's probably about forty five. Hang on a second. So seven degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's like forty five, forty four point six. Uh, yeah, it so, starts to get cold. Yeah, that's cold. See, I'm in Florida, man. So anything south of <laughs> south of like uh, sixty is cold for me now. And even though, I, so anything south of fifteen degrees, I'm cold. Um, so I'd I, went, ha- I went fishing six o'clock this morning. I was actually freezing my ass off. Oh, I would imagine. Yeah. What do you fish for out there? Uh, today I was fishing, uh, I don't know if it's trout, it's called rainbow trout. Yeah. Yeah. They have those here. Yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. yeah they have yeah, them in rainbow the Pacific trout. Northwest. They're really yeah. good fish. They're beautiful. They're big. They're good sized fish. What do you, do you fish off a, in a boat or do you fish off the side? Like by the off river? The, off the side. Today, sometimes in a boat, and yeah. What do you use for bait to catch those? Today, I used worms and shrimps. Very cool. Yeah. So you just go to the bait shop and buy worms and shrimps, and yeah, yeah. or you dig it up in your backyard if you want. That's oh, that's really cool. You know, yeah, that's great. It's no problem doing that. Um. So, what was your childhood like growing up? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> can continue talking about fishing. I was fishing a lot with my dad because <laughs> he loved fishing. That's my earliest memories is fishing. Is fishing you know? with your dad? That's really cool, yeah. man. Did, did you come yeah, from? My... Go ahead. No, sorry. Yeah. Nah, you you go. No, you go. <laughs> you go. No, I don't know. I don't remember what I was going to say. So <laughs> no, I had said, "What was your childhood like?" You said fishing with your dad. Did... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my childhood. Childhood was, was good. So, yeah. That's very cool. Uh, did you have brothers or sisters? I have one brother, younger brother. Does yeah. he play music? No, not at all. He's, I would not say totally uninterested in music, but almost. Oh my God. He likes some stuff, but yeah, that's, yeah, he doesn't really care. Did you have like a musical household? Like were your parents into music or? Not really. They had some vinyls, but it was, it was mostly me. It was playing the, their vinyls. <laughs> That's interesting. They man. they didn't yeah they didn't play any instruments or anything. So, what what uh, what kind of work did your dad do? Uh, he used to work at the steel mill. Okay. Uh, he 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 died like fourteen years ago in cancer. Oh my god, man! I'm so sorry. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit! That's fucked up. I'm really sorry to hear that, man. Thank you for telling me that. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Um, as far as career wise. Right. If you could go back and give your younger self advice, is there anything you might have told yourself to do that would have made your life easier? Not really, because I'm pretty happy as how it is now. Great, man. I, uh, yeah, I'm not making a lot of money. I still have to, yeah, when we're not touring or anything, I still have to work a regular job. And, but still, I'm happy with them. I get to do what I love doing playing my music and if people like it, it's, that's great. But I'm, yeah, we're still, I'm playing what I want to play and touring and I have a, yeah, family now. So it's, it's all good. That's great, yeah. man. Yeah. Talk about gear for a few minutes. Uh, yep. um, you mentioned the, the Firebird. Is that your go-to guitar right now? Yeah. <laughs> it's been that Firebird since yeah for almost yeah i think it's about 20 years now or something oh wow interesting yeah. is, is there anything else you play besides the fire i bird? have i have three firebirds and then i have an sg also and i had a flying wee for a while but that didn't really feel right so i sold it so what that's you, the electric guitarist i have to, what do you like about the fire is that with the mini humbuckers the firebirds yeah yeah, yeah. Is that what you like about them? The, the the that sound? Yeah, it's the, it's the sound and the way it feels when I play it. And yeah, uh, are the necks on those thick or thin, or it depends on which what year you get, it's, I guess. Yeah, it depends on what year. And but the ones I have, the one I have one from the seventies, and that's not so thick. And the nineties one is pre- a bit thicker. And yeah, yeah, they're, they're all different. Yeah. And and is is the typical setup through the fifty one fifty still the PV fifty one? No, no, I use a Soldano nowadays. 
a lot of a lot of that's a great amp because I know a lot yeah, of yeah I love it. Do, do you know uh, Government Mule Warren Haynes? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think he that's one of his amps he plays. Yeah, too. I've seen him yeah, several he, times in concert. Yeah. And, uh, what is your typical setup pedal board wise, and what are you using to get your fuzz and distortion nowadays? For distortion, I actually have a Swedish pedal called Fetto. That means yeah, it's Fatso. <laughs> it's a brand called Himmelstrutz. <laughs> yeah, I won't write that it's down. A, it's a Swedish, <laughs> Swedish underground pedal, but it's yeah, it's I think it's doing pretty well. It's, it's <laughs> getting more me? and more known. So it sounds great. Yeah, it's a great pedal. And then I have a yeah the. Plexi drive, but the Vampler Plexi drive. Okay. That's the two that I get the the distortion from. I don't actually have a fuzz pedal. That's really interesting because your stuff is pretty fuzzy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. On the new album, actually, I borrowed some from yeah the studio. Had a lot of pedals, and I you know use a mini fuzz face on a couple of songs. But that was. Just- so I'm thinking. I'm thinking about buying one of those, but that's, yeah. Dude, whatever you're doing, it sounds freaking great. I mean, stick with that formula. It it, 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 it sounds wonderful, man. I thought Yeah, sure- that's that's how I usually do. I, I play, I have the same pedals or whatever until it breaks. And if I can't find a new one, I have to find something else. And, you know, I have a hard time. I, I don't really want to change the, how do you say it? Yeah, you don't want yeah, to change yeah, if you don't have to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I have, I have a hard time changing pedals. Cuz if I have my sound and I'm happy with it, then yeah, I change it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um anybody that influences your playing that people would be surprised to hear? <sighs> Not really surprised to hear, but in there when I started playing guitar, I was totally into Steve Vai and Joe Satriani and that Nuno is... Bettencourt, Nuno Bettencourt from Extreme. He's an amazing guitar player. He, he is. I still think that. Yeah. He has, yeah, he's really technical, but he has that. Yeah, he's playing with feeling, you know. Very much. Yeah, I just yeah. spoke to someone recently. Who's supposed to be getting me an introduction to him because I'd like to have him on the show because I, I agree with you. I think he's a great player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. Any guitar players that you've jammed with that you had a really good time? I haven't really jammed with so many guitar players, so it's only Frederick from Dozer. So yeah, okay. Yeah, I love playing with him. <laughs> Desert Island Discs, in no particular order. What would be your top three, just for today? Because it could change. Well, tomorrow. today, and I, I think I have to say, probably, Caius Sky Valley with Caius, mm-hmm. and then maybe. Let's see. The White Album with Beatles. There's so much going on on that album, so that would be perfect to have on, on an island. And then, um, yeah, what else should I take? By the Grace of God with Helicopters. By the, that's, I don't, who, is that the band, By the Grace of God? No, uh, that's, that's the name of the album, The Helicopters. It's a Swedish band. I've never I have to check that out. Yeah, yeah do it. That's a pretty wide range, Caius and the Beatles. I like that, yeah. man. That's really yeah, that's, cool. That's my music taste. You and know, I listen to everything from death metal to to blues and yeah. Do you know uh, Sepultura? Yeah, yeah, of course. I interviewed uh, Andreas. Oh, cool. He's a really intense guy. It was an interesting interview. And they uh, they started as like activists. I don't know. Does that make, you know what activists like? Yeah, 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 yeah political yeah. activists. And that's how yeah. they, their idea was to like sort of tell the truth about Brazil through their music. And so he yeah. had, it was an interesting story talking with him. Um, man, this is a really tough question. Or maybe not because you're an easygoing guy. What do, you, what do you like most about yourself, Tommy? I have patience. You know, I don't get... S- rest right away if something goes wrong i that's, just sit down and then try to figure out how to solve the problem that's great i man. think yeah that's really good how about the flip side if you want if you could change one thing about yourself what would it be oh that's <clears throat> there's probably many things but yeah i don't know 
change one thing about myself. Yeah, maybe I should lose some weight or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I'm actually happy the way I am. But still, yeah, losing a few pounds wouldn't wouldn't hurt. So I hear you, man. Me and you both. Uh, who's had the biggest influence on your life, musically and personally? What can you say the question again? Yeah, I'm sorry. Who has been the biggest influence on you, musically and also personally? Musically, it's I definitely have to say Kiss. Probably that's the biggest influence from the early days, and then when I grew up and when I was in my twenties, it was like Soundgarden and. And then came Caius in the yeah in like ninety four or something. Yeah, uh, Caius was the band that made made us tune down our guitars, you know. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Most people in most bands in the stoner sort of, and I hate to use that word stoner because yeah. I because I, it's I, I I used to hate it, but nowadays I don't really care as long as people listen to it. I don't care whatever. What they call it. Yeah. No, I know what you're saying, but I hate to put people in buckets because like, yeah, I am. I, I, you know, I love your music, man. To me, it's like just great blues rock, man, you know, and yeah. stoner. I mean, I don't, anyway, um, a lot of people in that, a lot of bands in that genre are tuning down pretty much, aren't they? Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, Most of the bands, I think. Yeah. Um, do you have any hobbies or interests outside of music besides fishing? <laughs> um not really it's yeah yeah okay that's music collecting vinyls that's all yeah it's it's music and my family and fishing that's that's the only things in my life pretty much man that's a nice rich life as far as i'm concerned right <laughs> last question and i really appreciate your time man, and i wish you nothing but success with the new record and everything else you do in your life with your family and, and your daughter and everything but um Biggest change in your personality over the last 10 years, and has the change been intentional or has it been a function of aging? I think it's the biggest change is actually that I have a lot more self confidence now than I was younger. Let's say my early 20s or around there, I was actually really shy. I still am shy, but not the way I was back then. I think um, music changed it for me. Going on tour, playing in front of people. I, I never had, I was never afraid or, okay, I, okay, I was a bit nervous the first times I played live. But I felt felt at home being on stage, playing guitar. And Dude, that people is... always think, usually I get, I'm, I move around quite a bit when we play live and I, I'm totally into the music. And when people see me, they, especially friends from work or anything, see me for the first time live, it's the total opposite of the, <laughs> the yeah, the person that they see at work. Because I'm, yeah, really mellow, calm guy. And on stage, I just explode. You do. I've seen videos, man. It's great. I mean, you're into it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the only way I can. Yeah. I, I have to give 100% every every time. That's great, man. It's to to feel happy and to feel it, to really feel it on stage. But yeah, that's yeah, my what's it called? Self confidence. Self -confidence got a lot yeah. better. Yeah, got a lot better from yeah, starting a band, playing live and That's great, man. Well, I'm really happy to hear that. And uh man, considering English isn't your first language your English is excellent, man. So thank you very much. I don't know how the hell you write songs in another language. That, that always <laughs> boggles my mind. But man, I can't thank you enough for your time. I really appreciate you coming on the show. You're one of my guitar heroes. And so it was real cool to meet you. And I want to tell everybody, um, please check out, check out Tommy and Greenleaf. So let me tell you, uh, the new album is Hear the Rivers. And so in two days, you can listen and hear the rivers and do that. And please check them out. The album's available wherever, you know, you normally buy or listen to music. Um, also check out Dozer. They haven't had an album since 2008. But if you like, again, great rock and roll, you know, 70s sort of bluesy rock, real powerful, real strong stuff, very melodic extremely melodic check out dozer as well and uh you can find greenleaf on both instagram and facebook 
and um, support Tommy and the guys. They're doing a great job. And um, man, thank you for everything. Anything else that I, f- I missed here? No, I think you've pretty much covered it all. So great. Thanks. And man, I hope to see you in the States sometime. That would be so cool. I, I really hope so too. Um, and if anybody's listening and can bring Greenleaf over here, reach out to Tommy through Facebook or get a hold of me and I'll connect you all because um they're a great band and they should be heard. They're it's a it's a you know real you know it's a really unfortunate thing the way the music industry is now and I don't want to go on a rant because I know all you guys listening to guitar players on preaching to the choir here. But um you know as a as a as a fan of music, it's frustrating for me because I'd love to see guys like this touring and they should be touring and, and, you know, Astrosonic and bands like that. I mean, it's just, and, and truck fighters, they were over here for a little bit, but Oh, also thanks to Dango for connecting us. That was uh, really cool. Yeah. And, um, anyway, listen to uh Greenleaf and check out Dozer as well. Everybody, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this interview, please share it with a friend on your social media channels. We certainly appreciate your support. Thanks again to Tommy Halapa for spending time with us. Congratulations to you, to your girlfriend, and uh, with the baby. And um, everybody, make sure you go to the homepage of Everyone Loves Guitar. Sign up to get on our newsletter list. You can get advance notice of guests coming on the show and the opportunity to send them in your own questions. And most important, remember that happiness is a choice, so choose wisely. Be nice, go play your guitar, and have fun. Till next time, peace and love. I'm out. We hope you enjoyed this show. If you did, subscribe to the Everyone Loves Guitar podcast, and you can do this online at everyonelovesguitar.com or on iTunes. And if you like the show, please leave us a five-star positive review. The more five-star reviews we get, the higher our show ranks, and higher rankings mean we get to continue speaking with cool, interesting guests on our show. We'll see you on the next episode, and until then, keep playing your guitar and have fun making music.